absolutely Baltic out there today. I think I picked the worst day to go out and get my food. It's trying to snow, but it's just turning into sleet. So it's ice cold out there today, but I had to go out as much as I didn't want to. And I don't think I'd left the house for about three or four days. So that was needed and the fresh air was good, I guess. But now I'm just in that mood where I just want to put my pajamas on immediately and drink loads of cups of tea and not do anything. I have got some work to do, but I just don't have the energy to do it. Um, so that's great. I'll probably put that off, procrastinate and do the work tomorrow. Um, just trying to think where to prop up the camera because I brought myself a nice bottle of wine, which I think might be of interest. What can I prop you up on? Bear with, I'll find something. Okay, I've actually propped you up on the, um, the box that my wine came in. I'm just going to take my bag off, try and make myself look less bedraggled. This lighting is extremely unflattering. Um, come on. So yeah, I've got myself a bottle of wine. I haven't spoken about wine for a while because, um, don't know why I haven't really. I'll take my hat off as well. But I'm kind of doing dry January. Well, I haven't said, right, I'm doing dry January, but I haven't had a drink since New Year's Eve. So I'm thinking I might just keep going to the end of January and just see how I feel. But in the interim, I've still been collecting wine to drink eventually because there are a couple of shops close to me that do stock some very nice wine but get it in in such small quantities so it's a case of buying it there and then when you see it um, even if you don't plan on drinking it immediately. This Riesling by Framingham I first tried in Scotland back last summer and I bought it from a oh, um, shop in Edinburgh, cannot remember, is it called Smith and Gertrude I think it was called, beautiful wine shop and um, little kind of restaurant that you can sit and have nibbly bits. Anyway, I bought this from there and it was incredible and I remembered it the other day and googled it and found that there was a deli near me that sold it so I picked that up today and I'm excited to drink it whenever that will be. I'm just not, it's not that I don't want to have alcohol. I'm just sort of seeing how it, like how it makes me feel not drinking alcohol for a, a few weeks. Um, I mean, I must admit, I feel like my skin is clearer, but I don't know if that was a combination of just everything I was eating and drinking over Christmas that was making me break out of it. And now that I'm not doing any of that at all, it's cleared up quite rapidly. Um, but I can't say I'm feeling any more etogenic, et energetic from not drinking alcohol. But I think January is a hard one anyway, isn't it? It's hard to have energy regardless of um, your diet or whatever. So yes, I'll, um, I'll keep going and see if I last until the end of Jan. I reckon I will. I was having quite a bad day the other day and cut my hair with the kitchen scissors. I can't deny that having a bad day was conducive to me cutting my hair, but it wasn't the, the my hair wasn't the reason I was having a bad day. I've been really quite low um, the past week. It's all of a sudden sort of creeped on now that I don't have, like work's slowed down a little bit. I don't have, like I'm not painting the dining room anymore. I don't have, much to focus on at the moment and I feel quite low and I'm struggling to shake it so um, in my sort of I guess quite low state I thought that maybe trimming my hair might uplift me a little bit because I have been frustrated with my hair actually for a couple of weeks not that that is anything in relation to why I'm feeling so low but I just thought you know what I'm gonna get the scissors and I just went straight across the bottom it doesn't look too bad, but I'm sure there are hairdressers watching this right now, literally screaming at their computer screen because you're always told never to cut with kitchen scissors, at least cut with, cut with hairdressing scissors. But um, 
it's not terrible. I, I did the mirror trick, like I checked the back. Um, what I'm trying to illustrate is, is it's not terrible. It's a means to an end because it was quite ratty. Ratty is such a horrible way to describe hair, but it was. And it's still a little bit ratty at the front, but that's because I have um, it cut into. I'm sure if a hairdresser went through this with a fine tooth comb, they'd be like, you really, really messed up. But to the naked eye or just someone literally glancing, it's not too bad. I, I mean, it looks very blunt at the bottom there, but I, I quite like that. I quite like how blunt it looks. My hair looks like two spaniel ears just sitting either side of my head. Anyway, um, what else can I talk to you about? I feel like I just don't have anything of interest to talk to you about at the moment. I did receive a moody order that I placed a couple of days ago, though. I ordered some new diffuser oils for my diffuser because I'm currently still using... Sorry, if that was complete gobbledygook to you, the diffuser is that big ball of light that I sometimes show in the vlogs that is normally emitting water vapour. You fill it with water and then put about five to six drops of scented oil, any scented oil of your choice in there, and then it emits it across the room through um, evaporated water and acts as a very ambient light as well. It's the, out of all of the diffusers I've seen on the market at the moment, I do think the Moody one is the best one, especially in terms of value for money and the way it looks. Anyway, I have been using a lot of the Christmas and more wintry scents of theirs. And as we get closer and closer to the end of January, I just feel like I need to just let Christmas go, stop clinging onto it. So I ordered Refresh, I Am Home and Focus. You can see there's a bit of a theme going on there. If you've been into a Muji store, you know that classic Muji smell of like eucalyptus, a bit of lemon, sometimes there's a bit of bergamot, rosemary, all three of these have got those sorts of notes. So they're very, they're very clean, very calming, very refreshing. So hopefully they will make me feel a bit refreshed because even though I've got rid of the Christmas tree, I've actually still got the wreath up, which I need to get rid of this week. It hasn't even... It's still looking really good, so I kind of don't want to get rid of it, but I don't know. I mean, I've gone past the point of bad luck omen now, haven't I? Um, so yeah, even though I've got rid of most Christmas stuff, I think maybe just a change of scent will be really nice for this space as well. A very quick working from home OOTD. Nothing too exciting, but it feels nice to be in some proper clothes as opposed to just sitting around in joggers and a jumper which is what I've been wearing for the most part recently so this feels incredibly smart. A full head to toe navy look, not my shoes but my socks are navy. This is a cashmere turtleneck from Vince, I think this is about three or four years old. Apologies this outfit is made up from quite old pieces but it's quite an easy one to replicate or find similar items on the um on the market at the moment so yeah this is a cashmere turtleneck from vince about three or four years old and the reason i love this turtleneck so so much and have hold held on to it for so long a the quality of it is really good and it's still looks brand new and b it's a turtleneck as opposed to a roll neck so it doesn't require a roll down the piece of fabric just goes straight up and i i find that more flattering i've spoken before how turtlenecks can be a little bit dodgy can't they when you get caught out um, and I find when you have to do a roll down things get a bit uncomfortable things get a bit chunky so this is just simply straight up and I do think it's a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more flattering on the neck and jaw not that, that I'm overly concerned about that but just to let you know the pedantic detail that I enjoy about this turtleneck trousers are Sandro some of you might remember I wore these loads <laughs> sort of last summer and towards the autumn. I don't know why I kind of put them away because they're wool and they probably are more suited for this time of year, but they're so, so good. If you're five, three or four, like five, four, maybe five, five, I just think they're brilliant. Um, I do think there are a few pairs of these still knocking around actually. Last time I checked, not too recent, not too long ago, they had a couple of pairs on sale on the Sandro website and on Farfetch. I'll have a look around and leave links. Shoes are from Studio Nicholson. They're a collaboration with the Japanese brand Moonstar. I think they might have this colorway still in stock. These are about three years old. 
if they don't have this exact colorway they'll have a similar colorway and then navy muji socks these trainers are brilliant and i don't know why i don't wear them more um I think it's because they're quite slim line and I've just got so used to wearing a chunky shoe. But digging these out has really inspired me to do a wardrobe review on trainers. Uh, maybe specifically white trainers, I'm not sure. But I've got quite a few pairs that could do with an in-depth review. Right, I need to get on with some work. This is why I've got dressed because I'm filming something and I need to look semi-smart for it. Hello, I'm going to end the vlog with a beauty haul. So if you're not interested in beauty, then feel free to switch off now. If you are, maybe grab yourself a cup of tea or a drink of some sort because I could be here for a while. I've acquired quite a few new beauty products over the past couple of weeks. And for the most part, everything I've ordered has been really good. So I've got quite a few things that I'd like to share with you. Now, I'm quite a creature of habit when it comes to beauty, especially my makeup. I've been doing the same sort of, well, the same style of makeup for about the past two or three years. Um, and I'm the same with my skincare, really. So I'm not a continuous beauty shopper. Um, and I definitely don't keep on top of what's new or what's good. A lot of it is just word of mouth from friends or just dipping in and out of a few beauty bloggers that I follow, follow sorry. Um, I feel very tongue-tied this week. I feel like I can't get sentences out at all. I've, whenever I've been voice noting friends, I've just been a bit like, Bleh. so I think I'm just not, because I'm not socialising with people, I'm just a bit like, Bleh. Um, lost my train of thought now. Uh, so yeah, I don't buy a lot. What I tend to do is when the seasons change, I buy some new skincare, some new makeup, and then that keep me going until the next seasonal change. So that's kind of what I've been doing over the past couple of weeks. I've got a mix of clean beauty and non-clean beauty. This year, I've set myself a goal of switching over to 100% clean beauty. Um, I think giving myself the entire year is very generous, but there are a few beauty products that I feel someone will have to pry out of my hands in order to stop me from using them. Been feeling a little bit um, dull at the moment. Um, I don't wear foundation, so I always rely on like good moisturizers or like good blushes to really lift my complexion. But I feel like they're just not cutting the mustard at the moment. So I've bought myself two new base products. They're not foundations by any means, but they're just products to kind of even out and warm up my skin tone a little bit. The first is Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint with SPF 30 heard lots and lots of good things about this prior to purchasing it and it wasn't until I found out that it had hyaluronic acid, niacinamide and SPF 30 in it that before I thought, Do you know what, actually I really need to give this a go because I love a product that combines lots of things into one product. I really don't like layering things up on my face in the mornings. I don't mind so much in the evening but in the morning I just, I feel like my skin has this three product limit and then it's just at capacity and can't handle anything else on top of it after that. So this saves me a lot of time with SPF and the hyaluronic acid and it's a skin tint. I ordered this through, I think the website was called Naturismo, something along those lines, I'll leave the link below, because you can't order this through Ilia and get it shipped to the UK, for some reason they don't ship this product to the UK. But I did use the Ilia website to pick a shade because they've got quite a complex shade matching tool on their website. However, I do feel no matter how complex those things are, you never really get a full idea of what a shade will look like in real life. So I ordered two shades, one neutral, one warm, because I always feel like I sit in between neutral and warm. I've got Diaz and Aura. Aura is the warmer shade and is actually the shade I've been using the most. Um, that seems to be a very good match for me. Diaz, it was a little bit too dull. It, it washed me out a little bit. Um, I think that might be because of the SPF. I know in pre with previous SPF foundations and things, they, there is that slight white cast underneath some of them, isn't there? Um, so maybe with this product, it's better to go slightly more warm toned. I'm not sure, but Diaz for me wasn't quite right. Aura is the one. The texture at first, I was like, oh my God, it's so thick. I this this is horrible. Turns out I just put way too much on. You only really need about two or three drops of it. Um, and 
it's beautiful. It, it, you need to kind of give it like a couple of minutes to kind of do its thing and it sort of evens out and um, then you're just left with this beautifully hydrated complexion. It doesn't cover anything, which is what I want. I don't want things, I don't want base products to cover. I just want them to even out and this does that beautifully. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really pleased with this. Ilia is a clean beauty brand. I know they're stocked in a few other websites here in the UK. I'll leave some links below. The second base product is the Water Fresh Tint from Chanel. Um, I've got the shade Medium Light. When this came out about, I think it was two years ago, maybe even three years ago, I was obsessed with it. Um, but then they had some production issues and um, medium light was no longer available and it wasn't available for about a year. So it just dropped off the radar and I stopped using it when mine ran out. So I wanted to repurchase it to see if I still loved it as much and annoyingly I do. And I say annoyingly because Chanel isn't a clean beauty brand, but this product is just beautiful. The texture is incredible. It is literally like putting water on your face. I'll, I'm not very good at this kind of thing. I'll actually take the product out of the box rather than just waving the box at the camera. It comes with a like a flat topped kabuki or a stippling brush, I'm not sure the technical name. And the product itself looks like, um, like pigmented, droplets of pigment suspended in water. And then when you dispense it, those drops of pigment burst and create a very, very nice fresh glow. Again, doesn't cover anything, just creates a very nice, even, fresh glow. Um, so yes, still in love with that product, very much so. I'm actually wearing it today. Okay, oh, one more makeup product. I've um, got two new colours from Mana Size 7. I can't remember if I've spoken about Mana Size 7 before. A clean beauty brand, which I started using uh, towards the end of last year. They sent me one of their all over colours in this beautiful, really sort of dark brick red. So I've ordered a couple more colours because I'm really impressed with them. They're called the All Over Colour Creamy Finish and the idea is that you can use them on your lips, on your cheeks, on your lids, you know, just all over. I've got the colour Bisque. This looks really brown in the pot and quite scary, but actually, I mean, I've got it on today. I'll put a little bit more on. It... It's fairly light and buildable, so although it looks pigmented in the pot, it doesn't come out looking quite scary, as you would imagine. Although I think I put a bit too much on there. <laughs> um, and then I've got Etruscan, which I think will be a little bit better for when I am maybe a bit more tanned, more of a summery shade. Although, I mean, it still would work now, but it's very, it's got a slight coral warm undertone to it. Love these so, so much. And the packaging's very nice, you know, lots of nice typeface on there. Comes in a very nice box with very nice design on it. They are quite expensive, however. I think one of these was just over 40 euros. Um, so just a pre-warning, but the product is beautiful. Um, and I like that it's multi-purpose. Okay, moving on to oils because I've got I really got into like body oiling over the past couple of months. Um, so actually, these aren't really recent purchases, but I wanted to include them because I've loved them so so much. Trying to have have a bath at least once a week, and then after I've had a bath, I will completely lather myself in body oil, and then sometimes I'll maybe do like a second oil later on in the week after a shower. So just two body oils I really loved. The Suzanne Kaufman body oil, um, this is just their regular body oil. I, I adore pretty much all Suzanne Kaufman products and this is no exception. The smell, everything just smells like nature and oh, it's just, I'm trying to think, there's a little bit of orange in there I think. Um, it doesn't actually say on the back what the scents are or what's in it so I can't really tell you much but um trust me very very nice second is this body oil from Edie Ede maybe I'm not sure how to pronounce that one made in the UK so if you'd like to support a small brand that's made here in the UK then definitely check them out 
This body oil is also divine. It's got, this one's a bit more woody. Um, there's definitely some notes of like cedar wood. Does it say on here? Oh yes, oh yeah, grounded by a base of cedar wood, sweet orange and grapefruit oils. Both very nice, very nice oils. Um, I feel like I can't get my words out today. I feel like I haven't been able to get my words out all week because I'm not really socialising, I've kind of forgotten how to talk. Moving on to facial oils. I've got the 100% organic cold pressed hazelnut oil from Rouse. Is it Rouse or is it Ruse? Um, I'm terrible with pronouncing names. I first discovered this brand a couple of years ago when um, Nuria, the founder, invited me to a press event in East London. Um, she's absolutely divine and has such a beautiful eye. Her photography is gorgeous. Um, I'll link her Instagram below. I use this uh, clean beauty brand, by the way. I use this about four to five times a week. It's the last step in my evening routine, right before I go to bed, about four pipettes, like four drops in my hand, smushed together, just pat on my face and leave it to sink in while I sleep. Um, the main use is to hydrate my skin, basically, um, because I do have dehydrated skin. It's weird, I've got like oily T-zone, but I've got dehydrated skin. Um, so yeah, just leave this sinking overnight and wake up with a very soft feeling, supple skin. Packaging is so nice as well, isn't it? Second facial oil, this one's still in its box because I only ordered this about a week ago. Um, and I thought I'd keep it in its box for this video. The Guy Morgan Dagger Rose Facial Oil. This brand is based in the UK. I think they're in East London and everything is made within the UK. Um, I'll take it out of the box, but let's just appreciate the packaging because I love, I love a good bit of packaging. Voila. I also ordered, because they do this as a duo, the Guy Morgan Gua Sha tool because this is currently what I'm using snapped in half that's not safe so I decided to treat myself to the duo um, the smell is really nice it's not it smells of rose but it's not it's not overpowering and it's not that sort of musty rose that we kind of associate rose smelling like I don't particularly like the smell of rose but this I think so it mixed in with something else, seedling, rose hip, and raspberry. So it's a hint of rose, but very subtle. So I've just been reducing the amount of times I use this and just introducing this. Um, and the both of them together, very nice routine. Okay, next, okay, two more products. Oh. Do you remember when I had that photo shoot uh, before Christmas? Um, it was for Cartier. I can't remember if I actually said who it was with in the end, but those of you who follow me on Instagram probably put two and two together. It was with Cartier. And the makeup artist did the most incredible job with my skin and my makeup. And I asked her um, for a rundown of some of the products that she used on my skin. And she used Augustina Bader's The Cream, which it's so annoying because I've been putting off buying this cream for so long because of its ridiculously high price tag. It's £200. Now, I have to be honest, I did not pay £200 for this product. I bought it through Liberty. Now, I shop Liberty quite a lot and when you shop Liberty regularly, you accumulate points. And after Christmas, I had accumulated enough points in that I had a £50 voucher to spend. So immediately I was like, hmm, I could use it on the cream. And I also get 25% off whenever I shop Liberty because I have a press discount. So in total with the voucher and the press discount, this came to £110, which is still very expensive, but a lot more appealing than £200. Um, it's really good. And I kind of didn't want it to be good because you know when something is so raved about and it's so expensive and you're like, there's no way, like, but, it is really good. Um, I've heard so many good things about Augustinus Bader and it is one of those brands that I think does live up to the hype. The, the things that I have used in the past have worked and this is no exception. 
The word cream does usually scare me quite a lot, but this is quite a light cream. I know there's a thicker version, but I, th I just think the thicker version would be too thick for me. It, um, it, it makes my skin look really good. I've been using it for about two weeks now and I feel like my skin looks really hydrated. It looks really smoothed out. Um, it looks really healthy. I haven't had any breakouts or anything. The thing, I mean, I don't know if this did it, but over the course of my last period, I didn't have any breakouts, which is really unheard of for me, um, which could have been to do with this. It could have been accumulation of all the products I've been using. I don't know. But what I do know is, is I'm really, really happy with how my skin looks since using this. Um, so I'm really sorry that I'm raving about a cream that is this expensive. However, it is extremely, extremely good. Next face product is the Aesop B&T Balance and Toner. I also could attribute my um, lack of breakouts over my period to this product as well. I do feel like my skin is extremely balanced at the moment. It's not as oily as it usually is. Um, so that could be this. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I really like most Aesop products. Most of them do agree with my skin. Um, and I've never really been a toner person. I always thought it was one of those steps that I just didn't need to include in my routine. But I have to say, my skin has been on its best behaviour since using this and the rest of these products. Um, and that is it. Oh, one more product. Sorry, one more. Um, this was actually gifted to me. I didn't buy this, but um, I use a lot of Drunk Elephant as it is anyway. So um, I can 100% vouch for this brand and this is an honest review. It is the TLC Sukari Baby Facial. This is basically an at-home peel. Um, I've only used it once, so it's difficult to kind of judge whether I'm getting a good experience from it or not. The one time I used it, I can't say I had wow results, but then again, I have been exfoliating quite a lot recently. I have been like really looking after my skin so maybe my face just didn't need a peel as much as I thought it would but maybe um, if you feel like your skin's a bit clogged or you haven't been exfoliating as much this could be quite good I have seen lots of people do like a before and after and their skin does look a lot brighter um, but for me it just didn't it wasn't as wow as I thought it was going to be but like I said I just think maybe I didn't need a peel at the time of using it um, I think that is it. My camera's flashing at me to say that there's only three minutes left on the memory card, so that is quite a signal to shut up and sign off. Um, I hope you enjoyed this week's vlog. I know it was a little bit different, um, but I just I haven't really had much to say, so I thought I'd put some lovely little footage to music. I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless, and I shall see you all in next week's vlog.